Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we will be looking into the efficient computation of PageRank algorithm that we have seen in the previous video. So there were some drawbacks in the PageRank algorithm that is covered in this particular technique. This technique is called PageRank with taxation. Taxation also called as damping factor. So let's quickly have an overview of this particular technique. So this technique is specially designed to overcome the drawbacks of the page rank algorithm. This particular technique accounts for the possibility or probability that the user may randomly jump from one page to another. In the earlier version of page rank algorithm, there was no provision for this. It was by default assumed that the user will follow a particular path or a link, but user can also randomly jump from one page to another web page. So this also has to be accounted and therefore the term possibility of user to randomly jump from one page to another is introduced. And this term is called as damping factor or the taxation factor, which is a factor of randomly moving from one page to other web page. This is also called as teleportation term. Now because of introducing this particular factor, it helps to mitigate the issues with convergence. Convergence means the dead ends that may be present inside any network of different web pages. Dead ends are those ends which doesn't point to any of the other nodes that are present inside the network. It also helps to mitigate the bias that is towards the larger websites which contains multiple web pages and also it mitigates the the vulnerability to link farms. Overall, it is more efficient than page rank without taxation. That was the normal page rank algorithm that we have seen earlier. So now I hope that you guys have now understood this particular overview of the, the page rank algorithm with taxation factor. Now let's have a look at the steps that are involved inside this particular algorithm. So let's consider a website with n different web pages. So there are certain web pages which is represented by the variable n. Now the first thing that we need to do is to set the vector r0. This vector r0 is nothing but the vector that contains the page ranks of every single node that is present inside the entire network of web pages. Now at the initial stage we don't know what is the page rank of every single web page. So in that case we'll assign a common page rank for every single web page that is 1 by n n being the total number of nodes that are present inside the network. If a network contains three nodes, that means at the initial stage, the vector r0 will contain 1 by 3 as the page rank for every single web page that are present in the network. Next, we need to compute the transition matrix M. This transition matrix M contains the transition probability of every single node to all the other nodes that are present inside the network. We will take an example where I will tell you how to convert a given graph into transition matrix M. Now the next step is to compute the matrix A. This particular matrix can be computed with the formula that is given over here. So beta into M plus 1 minus beta into a matrix which contains the order of N cross N. N is the total number of nodes present inside the network and the value inside that particular matrix will be assigned as 1 by N for every record. Now beta in this particular formula is the taxation factor that is the damping factor which usually lies between 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. It will be given in the problem. Now once we compute the matrix M and A the next step is to continuously calculate the next vectors. Now here the next vector is R1. So the next vector R1 can be calculated with the help of the formula that is the matrix A multiplied by the current vector that is R0 vector. Now similarly for calculating the next vector R2 we have to use the vector R1. So R2 will be multiplication of matrix A and R1 vector. So in general, for calculating the next vector, the formula can be something like this. The vector Ri plus 1 will be equal to matrix A multiplied by the vector Ri. So I hope you have understood this particular step. Note one thing that we need to calculate the vectors 
according to the iterations that is given in the problem. Once we complete all the iterations, we will be getting the final vector R and that vector will contain the final page ranks of every single web page in that particular network. The page rank of the web page that is the maximum of all will be called as the most relevant and important web page. So I hope the algorithm is clear. Now with the help of this particular algorithm, we will be seeing an example. So the example is something like this. Compute the page rank with a taxation factor of 0.8 of each web page in the following graph after three iterations. So we need to perform three iterations and the value of beta that is the taxation factor is given as 0.8 and the graph is given something like this. The graph contains three nodes. Each node is connected to every other node. I hope the problem is clear to you all. Now using this particular graph, we need to first compute the transition matrix that is M, the matrix M. So here, since we have three nodes, that means the value of n will be three. Hence, we'll be having a matrix of the order n cross n. And hence, in this particular case, we'll be having the matrix in the order of three cross three, something like this. Now, always remember for calculating the transition probability, we'll have to move from top to left. The nodes at top will be the origin node and the nodes at left will be the destination node. So something like this. Here you can see the first origin node is A and we need to move from A to A. So you can see that for node A, there are three possibilities to move to other nodes. Out of these three possibilities, one possibility says that A moves to A itself. Hence, the probability or the transition probability of moving from the node A to A will be 1 by 3. So I hope you understood this. Now similarly, we have to move ahead and now the origin node will be B. So we'll move from B to A. So here you can see for node B, there are two outgoing arrows, one to the node A and one to the node C. Out of this two, one arrow is moving to node A. So out of the two possibilities, one possibility is that B moves to A. Hence the probability will be one by two. Now we'll move ahead and now the origin node is C. So we are moving from C to A. So focus on the node C, you can see that C has two outgoing arrows, one to the node C itself and one to the node B. There is no outgoing arrow to the node A. Hence, the probability of moving from C to A will be zero. Moving ahead, now we'll be having the origin node as A and the destination node as B. So you can see that A has three arrows. Out of these three arrows, one arrow is moving to node B. Hence, the probability of moving from node A to B will be one by three. I hope you are understanding this. Now the next origin node is B and the destination node is B itself. Now you can see that B has no outgoing arrows which comes to itself. Hence the possibility of moving from B to B is zero. Next is C to B. You can see that from C there is one arrow which comes to B out of the two outgoing arrows. Hence the probability of moving from C to B is one by two. Something like this. Now moving ahead, next we have the origin node as A and the destination node as C. You can see that A has three arrows. Out of these three arrows, there is one possibility that A will move to C. Hence the probability is one by three. Next is B to C. You can see that there is one arrow which moves from B to C out of the two outgoing arrows. Hence the probability of moving from B to C will be one by two. Now the last is the transition of C to C. You can see that out of the two arrows that are outgoing from C, one arrow is going to node C itself. Hence, the probability of moving from C to C will be one by two. So this is how we compute the transition matrix. And this matrix is named as the matrix M. So once we calculate the matrix M, the next step is to calculate the matrix A according to the algorithm. So I hope you remember the formula. The formula is something like this. We need to multiply beta and the matrix M and also we need to multiply one minus beta with the matrix that we need to create a three cross three matrix, which will contain the values as one by N. And then we need to add these two results to get the matrix E. So in all, we have four different terms. We already have the value of beta in the given problem. Next, we have already computed the matrix M. 1 minus beta can be easily calculated and we have to construct this 1 by n matrix. 
so you can see that the value of beta is 0.8 the matrix m is already calculated and this is the matrix m next we have 1 minus beta so let's plug in the value of beta in this 1 minus 0 0.8 and next we have this particular 1 by n matrix you can note here that the matrix is of the order n cross n n is 3 in this particular case hence the matrix will be of the order 3 cross 3 and the value inside this particular matrix will be 1 by n so in this particular case n value is 3 therefore the values are 1 by 3 now according to the formula we need to multiply beta and m and we also need to multiply 1 minus beta and this particular matrix 1 by n and finally we'll have to add the results that we'll get after multiplication of these two terms so let's start the calculation so you can see that 0 0.8 can be written as 4 by 5 so now we need to multiply this 4 by 5 with every single value in the matrix m so the final result that we'll get will be something like this the first value is 4 by 15 the second is 4 by 10 the third is 0 and so on so we have finally got the value of beta into m now we'll multiply 1 minus beta and this particular matrix 1 by n you know that 1 minus beta is 0 0.2 0 0.2 can be written as 1 by 5 now you can multiply 1 by 5 with each of the terms inside this matrix 1 by 5 into 1 by 3 will be 1 by 15 and each of the terms in this particular matrix will be now 1 by 15 so the matrix will look something like this now once you calculate the results of both these particular terms after multiplication now you need to add it this is a simple addition operation that we need to perform between the, the two matrices so first term will be added with the first term second term will be added with the second term of the matrices respectively and finally you can get the result of addition so let's compute the final matrix after adding these two matrices so this is how the final matrix will look like the first term is 5 by 15 second term is 7 by 15 third term is 1 by 15 and so on and this particular matrix will be called as a matrix so i hope you have understood how to calculate the matrix a now we have calculated the matrix m as well as the matrix e now the next step is to continuously find the next vector with the help of the initial vector so the formula is something like this ri plus 1 will be equal to a into ri so we have to first calculate the initial vector that is r0 so in the iteration 1 we have the matrix a now as i said that r0 vector will contain the page ranks of every single node now initially we don't know what the page rank of every node in the given network so hence we'll be assigning the value as 1 by n n is the number of nodes in, in our case inside the network the number of nodes are 3 hence the value is 1 by 3 for every single node as a page rank in the initial vector r0 now we need to multiply these two matrices after multiplying these two matrices we'll be getting the r1 vector r1 vector is the result of the first iteration now you can see that the matrix a is 3 cross 3 and the matrix r0 is 3 cross 1 so the resultant matrix after multiplying these two matrices will be of the order 3 cross 1 so hence the r1 vector will be of the order 3 cross 1 so you can see the structure of the r1 vector will look something like this and now after multiplying these two matrices we'll be getting the first record value as 13 by 45 the second record value will be 13 by 45 and the third record value will be 19 by 45 so this is our r1 vector and now we need to use this r1 vector in the next iteration to find out the next vector so here you can see that the matrix a is this and this is the r1 matrix that we have already calculated now if you multiply these two matrices we'll be getting the r2 vector which is the next vector for r1 vector so these are the values that we have computed after multiplying these two matrices now we'll be using this r2 vector for computing the next vectors so let's jump to the next iteration that is the iteration number 3 and now in this particular iteration we have already the matrix a and we have the r2 vector that is already calculated now we have to multiply these two matrices to get the r3 vector note that this iteration is the final iteration
so you can see that we have got the result as 2641 divided by 10125 as the first record value similarly we have got the second record value and the third record value so this is the final r3 vector that we were supposed to calculate in the third iteration now we are done with all the three iterations and finally we have got this particular r3 vector now this is the final result you can see that the first record is for the node A, the second record is for the node B and the third record is for the node C. We have to find out the maximum of all of these. You can see that the maximum value is 4375 divided by 10125 and therefore we can make a conclusion that node C which is also called as a web page C has the highest page rank value which means that the web page C will be having the highest importance as well as it will contain the most relevant information and this is calculated with the help of page rank algorithm with the taxation factor or the damping factor so i hope you guys have understood how to calculate the page ranks using this particular technique if you guys have any single doubt then you can post it in the comment section and if you have reviews or suggestions then you can put it also don't forget to subscribe to my channel because subscription is very much important. It motivates me a lot. And also hit like if you like this video. Share it with your friends. And also hit the bell icon. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching.